TDOT Regional Director Stephen Borden calls it the state's largest slide in 30 years. Borden and other TDOT officials attended a press conference yesterday afternoon at the county garage where road superintendent Dennis Potter presented a plan for an alternate detour route for I-75 traffic. Nearly 30,000 vehicles come through Campbell County every day on the interstate and since a March landslide on I-75, most of that traffic is coming right through La Follette, Jacksboro, and Caraville when north and or south lanes of the interstate are closed. Right now, the south lanes are closed until at least Monday. Potter's idea would send southbound car traffic off at exit 144 down Stinkin' Creek Road over to Howard Baker Highway 63 and then back onto the interstate at exit 141. That's about a five-mile side route compared to the current 30-mile detour. Trucks would stay on I-75 and pass by the slide on a single lane. Potter says that graveled stretch of Stinkin' Creek Road needs to be paved, have some trees cleared, and work done on some curves first. Borden and Senator Ken Yeager, who was also on hand, were receptive of the idea However, Borden explains to WLAF that there are environmental and TWRA hurdles to clear. Yeager describes the traffic's effect on the local economy as chilling and says it's his job to help clear the path for TDOT to work to repair the slide on I-75 as it continues through September. And Potter closes by saying there will be times that traffic will again need to be detoured to side routes, making his idea even more valid. Whether or not TDOT decides to take Potter up on his idea remains to be seen. We'll continue to follow the story for you right here on WLAF and 1450WLAF.com. The Campbell County football team whipped South Doyle last night in Knoxville. Coach Justin Price's Cougars blanked the Cherokees 13 to nothing in the spring scrimmage. An excited Price shares thoughts of the matchup with WLAF by saying his team competed well. He goes on to say that the Cougars' attitude and effort were at a high level. Price adds that that's what it's going to take to get to the next level. The Cougars conclude spring drills Thursday night at 7 o'clock on Pat Kerr Field when the orange and blue intra-squad game takes place. Tom Steiner is honored today. And Campbell County's Career Center is officially named for Tommy C. Steiner today. The former county executive and mayor was full of funny quips as well as being humbled by the honor. He was quick to point out that there are 15 other names on the plaque that is bolded to the outside of the building. Steiner notes that the 15 commissioners along with him helped make the career center a reality. Current mayor William Baird told the large audience that not every county has such a facility and that through Steiner's efforts, Campbell County does. The center was built in 2001. Steiner served in the top spot for 10 years from 1992 until 2002. Cody Malicote has a change of plans. Jellicoe's two-time All-State basketball player officially announced at last night's all-sports banquet that he is going to play his college basketball at the University of Pikeville in Pikeville, Kentucky. Malakote originally signed with MTSU during the early signing period last fall. 
a full house packed the auditorium as the football, golf, cheerleading, and basketball teams were honored. Retiring Jellicoe High School coach Vic King was also honored. Malakote's new college coach, Kelly Wells, was the featured speaker at last night's banquet. Pikeville won the NAIA National Championship in 2011. The Little Theater has its first production this weekend. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, A Wish for Campbell County is performed on the Dottie Rogers stage at West La Follette School, now the La Follette Community Theater. Members of the Campbell High Junior Chamber wrote and are producing as well as performing its first play. One of the performers, Megan Burge, tells us a little about the production. I think it's just a really great program and I think it has a lot of promising. I think it'll be a really good start to help things out up here as well as like with the youth going and everything. And I think there's a lot of really, really good people pushing it and working behind it and I think it has potential to be extremely successful. TDOT officials are hopeful that the reopening of all four lanes through the Cumberland Gap Tunnel will help ease some of the I-75 traffic through La Follette. The four-lane tunnel had been reduced to two lanes since the first of the year for a restoring project. The traffic through the tunnel was back to four lanes yesterday with no restrictions on wide loads. And here is one more traffic tip this evening and tomorrow. You may have noticed the work going on at Elkins Road in Caraville. The crews are constructing a new turning lane where a new traffic light is to be in place by June 1st. Be aware while traveling of the workers and the slow traffic through that area. And that's our news for this Friday. Stay tuned next for the press release from the Campbell County Sheriff's Department. And it's time for the press release from the Campbell County Sheriff's Department. Five people have been booked in to the county jail in the past 24 hours. Rob Walter Brown, age 26, of Jacksboro Pike, La Follette, on a KPS bench warrant and evading arrest. 48-year-old Tony Linnell Evans of Nevada Avenue, La Follette, for possession of a Schedule II controlled substance and manufacturing, delivering, or selling a controlled substance. David Joe Hembry, 44, of Shawnee Shores in Jacksboro, for child support. 25-year-old Preston Aaron Morris of Mountain Road Caravel for possession of drug paraphernalia, driving while suspended, violation of the registration law, and violation of the Tennessee financial law. And last today, Tammy Walker, age 50, of Fairway Drive, La Follette, for violation of the check law. And that's a look at what's happening on this Friday evening. Thank you for joining us. We hope you have a nice, happy, safe weekend, and we hope to see you back here again on Monday. We sing happy birthday to you, and may all your dreams come true. Happy, happy birthday. Oh, oh, oh. This is your birthday song. Oh, oh, oh. Celebration all night long. Oh, oh, oh. May all your Good Friday evening, everybody, and welcome into your end of the week edition of birthday. Days and anniversaries brought to you by East Side Pizza and Deli and WLAF. We got a couple winners here for our birthday and anniversary club. But first, let's see who is celebrating a birthday or anniversary today. Jesse Shelton celebrating a birthday today. Sophia uh, Hol Holbrook celebrating three years old today. Got uh, Cindy Ward celebrating a birthday today. Luther Ward celebrated a birthday back yesterday. Hope all of you had a very good birthday. Our winner from today's birthday drawing is Mr. Gary A. Slinger, who celebrated 26 years back on Monday. Mr. Gary, I want to congratulate you. 
Uh, you get two free dinners from East Side Pizza and Deli over there in the Food Lion Shopping Center. Anniversary wise, we got a belated birthday or anniversary. I'm sorry. Uh, back from yesterday, Jerry and Jamie Ford celebrated 39 years yesterday. I want to congratulate that couple. Our anniversary winner is Ronald and Christy Reidner, who celebrated 12 years uh, together on Sunday. I hope uh, you all had a good anniversary. I want to congratulate you. We're going to be having another drawing next Friday, so if your birthday or anniversary are coming up next week, you can contact us here at the station by calling 562-1450, 566-1450, or 562-3557. You can email WLEF at BellSouth.net. Or fax in your information to 562-5764, and then we'll get you on our uh, list for next week's drawing for two free dinners from East Side Pizza and Deli. And that does it for our birthdays and anniversaries for this week. Hope you all have a good weekend. See you back here Monday.